Hey friends, this is Kelly Calabrese. Today I wanted to talk to you about grief. So let's get started. Grief is a part of life. I promise you no one, no matter how good they make it look on social media, is getting through this life without grief. In fact, 174 times in the Bible, it says you will struggle. And sometimes struggle could be suffering. It could be deep, deep grief. There are hard things that happen. I'm not talking about your hair didn't come out the way you wanted it or someone cut you off in traffic, but real things, people losing jobs, people getting sick, divorce. I know a lot of my community is here because you have suffered the grief of divorce. So I'm going to share my screen. I want to show you something that truly helped me. It's called the stages of grief. I don't know about you, but I am a knowledge person and it just helps me when I understand so at the point that this was shown to me by my sweet friend, Carla, who led a retreat that I went on that was so healing, I was depressed and I met her for lunch and she goes, Kelly, you're depressed. That's good. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Depression is good. And she goes, you're on the upswing. And she pulls out this stages of grief chart and she shows me depression is the upswing. So if we go back to where struggle and suffering and grief starts, it's really here. There's some loss, some shock, some unmet expectation, something that just came out of left field where it was like, what in the world? What do you, what do you mean? So let's use the example of divorce. Let's say adultery. You find out your spouse is cheating and maybe it was a slow fade. Maybe you were a little bit suspicious, but there's a moment in time where this is confirmed through something. And there's just that shock where you viscerally feel it in your body. Then you almost go into numbness. Like, wait a minute, you can't even feel anymore. You're confused. You're not even sure what to feel. You're just numb. You can't even think. You don't even recognize anything anymore. Then from there, you go into denial. It's like, wait a minute, this is not happening. What, what, what just happened? No, this isn't happening. This, this is not happening to me. And you, you go into denial. Now, keep in mind, you can stay stuck or stopped in any of these places. And that is the last thing you want to do. The idea is that we want to move through this grief cycle. The next one is emotional outbursts, where whatever's in your brain is just coming out. All the emotions are just flooding out of you and you're all over the place and you're hypersensitive, hyper-emotional, outburst, crying, and so on. And then that could move into anger. And you can't skip any of these. If you're not an angry person, like I am not, you don't feel like you want to be angry or even know how to be angry, but you need to be. It is part of grieving. It is okay to be angry. There's even something in the Bible called enmity, which is a holy, violent hate. Like you need to hate that your spouse cheated. You need to hate awful, evil things in the world, uh, pedophilia, uh, pornography, uh, drug addiction, obesity. I mean, hate these things. So you need to build up this anger against whatever the offense was. And then you'll have this fear where fear starts putting you in the future. And you start to imagine the future with, let's say this adultery, what does this look like? And will we get divorced? And where will I live? And what about the kids and our friends and school and all these things? And you start projecting in the future what might happen. And that's when fear comes in and takes over. Then you start searching. You're like, okay, wait, wait, what a minute. Let me just see. Um, well, what if we could work it out? What if we go to counseling? Um, what if I talk to uh, his parents, the girl, the, you know, whatever um, we separate temporarily, you're looking for solutions. You're trying to make sense of what is going on. Then there's disorganization where things are starting to unravel and you're trying to figure that out. So it feels chaotic because things may be out of your control. It might be someone else's doing that puts you into shock and there's things that you just can't control and things are falling apart. Then there's this panic that sets in and that's when people maybe for the first time in their lives are having these anxiety attacks because you can't separate the body, the mind and the spirit. So it's like this visceral, emotional, your mind, your will, your emotions all just put you into this panic state. 
And then you can move into guilt where you feel like, oh my goodness, I let my family down. I let my kids down. What part did I play in this? Was I a good enough wife? Um, you just start running with feeling guilty, especially if you were the one to contribute it. But even if you weren't, you can still feel guilt. Then there's loneliness where you just I'm like, okay, I don't feel like anyone can relate to me. I don't even know how to talk about this. Should I tell friends? I just want to be invisible right now. And that's when you can go into isolation where you stop wanting to go out. You don't want people to invite you. You don't want to pick up the phone. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk to friends about it. You just want to disappear and be alone in the darkness for a little bit. And that then leads to depression. And that's when you start pressing down the feelings and at this point, um, you're not feeling a lot of hope. It's, it's a hopeless kind of place. But eventually, you get to this re-entry where you start to adjust. And you start to adjust in a healthy way where you can accept, you know what? This is my situation. There's no going back. I need to be present. I need to start to move forward. And that's when you start to develop new relationships, whether it is professional, friendships, personal uh, even with yourself, you can just develop a new relationship and you start to build new strengths. Talk about any, talk to anyone who has struggled or suffered through anything and they will tell you they are so much stronger. They're more resilient. They know how to handle rejection. Um, they just have built some emotional, mental muscle through the struggle. And then you start to create new patterns in this readjusting. So this is what my life looks like now. So I have a choice. What am I going to do with this? Okay. I can choose to take care of myself. I can choose to be responsible. And then you have new hope because when you start doing those things, then it's like, okay, I'm starting to see the light. Like this is giving me hope. I'm feeling better. My brain is settling down. I'm not getting anxious. I'm making new friendships. I can get excited about the future a little bit. And then you, as it's happening, now it's being affirmed or you're getting feedback like, yes, I'm going to be okay. This is good. And eventually you'll get to a place where you can help others who you are ahead of, who are then going through some things that you can share your wisdom. So those are the stages of grief they, again, don't happen chronologically like that. You might be all over the place. We are. So for example, when my friend Carla met me and showed me this stages of grief, I had just found out that my former husband was remarried in a very short time after our divorce. And it was a total shock and surprise to me and to my children. So that sent me back, you know, it just triggered. So you can be re-triggered at any time and you can, um, you know, just get set back in this grief cycle. So the idea is don't get stuck. Don't get stopped looking at this, the stages of grief. Where would you say you are and have you been stuck and stopped there? And what is it going to take to move you along? Um, I was bitter for a long time. So that anger, fear, searching. I, I was in that place for a long time, even in panic, loneliness, isolation. Of course, COVID did not help with that. Anyone who went through divorce during COVID, it was like a, a double whammy. But I just want to encourage you that you are not crazy, that this is normal, that you need to go through this. And the people who go through it the best are the ones who get to this re-entry and do new things the fastest. If you're holding on to the past, if you're gripping with all your might to the way things were and not accepting whatever the struggle is, you're going to stay stuck there. So I wanna encourage you um, to move on from the grief cycle. There are things that you can't rush. In fact, I just saw a post from a friend who is three years out today from finding out her husband was having an affair and it's still hard. Has she come a long way? Yes. Has she healthy readjusted? Yes. But there's still sadness and moments where you grieve. You know, there's that first anniversary, that first Christmas, the first, you know, Mother's Day, whatever it might be that can trigger you, but you will get through it. You'll get through the first and you'll get to a place where you accept where you are and get excited about your future. So friends, I would invite you, if you are a woman going through any stages of separation, divorce, post-divorce, join our free Facebook group. It's called Intentionally Fabulous. It's a group of women there who 
talk about the hard things. We support each other. We laugh. And it's just a great safe place for you to go where you can share, where you can know that you're not crazy, where you can grieve through it, get to the other side and not only be great, but intentionally fabulous. Hope to see you there.